Hello viewers. Today I shall explain the various quantum numbers associated with vector atom model. You can find the outlines of this talk from this slide. The objective of this talk is that you will learn about various quantum numbers associated with this vector atom model. The learning outcome will be that you will be able to define quantization, describe expressions for angular momentum. You will be able to draw and depict the angular momentum at various orientations. You will explain the new quantum numbers arising due to the presence of the magnetic field. And finally, you will be able to summarize all the seven quantum numbers associated with this vector atom model. We know the basic concepts of vector atom model are spatial quantization of orbits and spin quantization. Now, let us see the different quantum numbers associated with this model. The first quantum number is called principal quantum number. This principal quantum number of an electron represents the orbit to which the electron belongs. It was proposed by Bohr and is represented as n. This n can have values from 1 to infinity. And if n equal to 1, it is named as k orbit. You can say orbit or shell. So n equal to 2, the shell is known as L shell. N equal to 3, the shell is named as M shell and so on. So N gives the orbit, the address of the orbit. N equal to 1 means electron is in the first orbit and it is named as K shell. So K, L, M, N are the names given to the various orbits represented by this N. If N equal to 0, electron will be inside the nucleus. So, n can never be equal to 0. You can see here, this is the nucleus. This is the first orbit or first shell, second shell, third shell and it can be named as K shell, L shell, M shell and so on. Now, number of electrons in an orbit is given by 2n squared where n is the principal quantum number. Now total energy of the electron in a particular orbit can be expressed like this. En is proportional to 1 by n squared. En is energy of the electron in the nth orbit. Okay, So it is given as En is proportional to 1 by n squared where n equal to 1, 2, 3, etc. Now, with n equal to 1, that means the first orbit, electron will be very closer to the nucleus than the other values. Okay, so here you find a small table that from this table you can find out what is the total number of electrons in the first shell or K shell. So, according to the formula, Number of electrons in a shell is given by 2n squared. If n equal to 1, you substitute here, you find that the first shell can accommodate only 2 electrons. For, L, for the L shell, n equal to 2, so total number of electrons will be 8. For n equal to 3, the number of electrons in the third shell will be 18 and the fourth shell will be 32 and so on. Angular momentum of this electron in any one of the orbit in any of the orbit is given as L equal to n h by 2 pi, where n is the principal quantum number. This is proposed by Bohr. If electron has this angular momentum, then that orbit is called stationary orbit. I hope you have understood the first quantum number. Right. The next one is orbital angular momentum quantum number it is denoted as l orbital angular momentum quantum number this quantum number comes due to the 
angular momentum arising out of its orbital motion. This quantum number defines the shape of the orbit occupied by the electron. Right? You can see that this electron is revolving in the orbit and this motion is called orbital motion and the angular momentum arising due, due to this motion is called orbital angular momentum. So the quantum number associated with this orbital angular momentum is called orbital angular momentum quantum number L. L takes values from 0 to n minus 1 where n is the principal quantum number. L specifies the subshell into which electron enter. The orbital, orbital corresponding to L equal to 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. are designated as S, P, D, F, etc. respectively. So the orbit corresponding to L equal to 0 is called S orbital. L equal to 1 is called P orbital. L equal to 2 is called D orbital. L equal to 3 is F orbital and so on. The orbital angular momentum can be expressed as L equal to small lh by 2 pi. This is orbital angular momentum. This L is orbital angular momentum quantum number. Just like the principal quantum number, this is another quantum number. Bose model suggested L equal to nh by 2 pi. Now, due to this orbital motion, the same formula is modified L as LH by 2 pi. Now, according to quantum principle, this L should be replaced by square root of L into L plus 1. So, angular momentum, second formula is root of L into L plus 1, H by 2 pi. Now, you find a table here, whatever I said, Depending on the value of principal quantum number, the shells are named as K, L, M, N. So, principal quantum number N equal to 1 means the shell is named as K shell. If N equal to 4 means the shell name will be N. Now, orbital quantum number L. L can have values from 0 to N minus 1. As N equal to 1, L can take only value 0. And this is what called subshell. This is represented as 1 S. Yes. In the previous slide we saw L equal to 0 means the subshell is named as S. Yes. Okay. So the address of the electron in L equal to 0 shell is written as 1 S. Yes. 1 represents to the principal quantum number. S yes represents the the value of orbital quantum number. So, when n equal to 2, L can have 0 and 1 value. It can have value from 0 to n minus 1 only. L can never be equal to n. Okay. So, L tells that there are two subshells. The total number of subshells is equal to the principal quantum number. Next, we will take an example n equal to 4. You find that L can have 0, 1, 2, 3. That means 4 subshells. The number of total number of subshells must be equal to the principal quantum number. So if L equal to 0, that is can be written as 4S because principal quantum number is 4. The next one L equal to 1 means 4P. L equal to 2 means 4D. L equal to 3 means 4F and so on. Now, in a subshell, what is the number of electrons? Can be calculated using the formula 2 into 2L plus 1. You can just take the example of 4. Apply here. When, when L takes a value of 0, you apply here. 2 into 0, 0. Plus 1, 1. So, 2 into 1 is 2. So, you have 2 electrons. 
in the subshell L equal to 0. Suppose if L equal to 3, right? Substitute here L equal to 3. 2 into 3 equal to 6 plus 1, 7. 7 into 2 will be 14. So in the subshell whose value L equal to 3 can accommodate 14 electrons. Now what is the total number of electrons in that orbit? It is given by the formula 2n squared. Now n equal to 4 means 4 squared is 16. 16 into 2, 32. Okay. So here these are the sub electron number in the subshells. Okay. Next we will discuss about the spin angular momentum quantum number S. Yes. All this you know already. Just we are introducing some different quantum numbers to know the address of the electron. Right. So you know the angular momentum arising due to the spin motion is called spin angular momentum. And the quantum number associated with this spin angular momentum is called spin angular momentum quantum number S. Yes. Yes, all this you know, right? Now, spin can have only two values, clockwise or anticlockwise. Now, you see, the spin angular momentum of the electron, S can be given as SH by 2 pi. In both. Now, by quantum mechanics, this S has to be replaced by square root of S into S plus 1. By quantum mechanics, S can be given by the square root of S into S plus 1 into H by 2 pi. The fourth quantum number is called total angular momentum quantum number and it is represented by J. Now you know electron can have two types of angular momentum. Orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. So what is the total angular momentum of the electron? Simply you have to add these two angular momentum and it is represented as J and the quantum number is called total angular momentum quantum number. Sometimes spin is clockwise, sometimes spin is anticlockwise. So when you take the total, you have to consider the vector sum of the orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum. Now J equal to j h by 2 pi where j is called total angular momentum quantum number. j can be l plus or minus s. So you can say l and plus sign is considered l plus s when l and s are parallel to each other and you have to say j equal to l minus s when they are anti-parallel. Now as per quantum principle Simply replace j by square root of j plus j into j plus 1. So j total angular momentum is equal to square root of j into j plus 1 into h by 2 pi. Right? So look at the diagram. From the diagram you will be able to understand very well. Now let me say the orbital angular momentum is pointed in this direction. And the spin angular momentum is pointed in this direction. Now, what is the vector sum of these two angular momentum? What you have to look at this diagram, okay? This L is marked here like this. The spin direction as such it is directed. You all, of, all of you know how to do vector sum. So, you add this L and S and this will give you J value which is equal to L plus S, okay? Suppose if spin is in the other direction, you can see now spin here is like this. Now it is directed this way. So J becomes L minus S. So very beautifully, the total angular momentum is expressed by this diagram. It is simply the vector sum of L and S. So next we will go to the next quantum number, number it is called magnetic orbital quant angular momentum quantum number M L. Means so far we just never considered the presence of the magnetic field. 
in the presence of the magnetic beam what happens let us see okay we know the vector representing the orbital angular momentum presses in the presence of the magnetic field presses about the z axis in the presence of the magnetic field we have already studied the expressions for l equal to square root of l into l plus 1 h cross or the projection of the angular momentum along the z direction is given as ml h cross l is called okay some expressions i have given here you can imagine now with the help of this diagram this is the orbital angular momentum directed like this if you apply a magnetic field you can see that this orbital angular momentum is precessing about the z axis along which the magnetic field is applied now what you have to do this l in magnitude is given by this expression the projection you have to take along the z direction that is given as l is equal to ml h cross you know theta is the angle between the orbital angular momentum and the direction of the applied magnetic field so you can see here right angle triangle here from this you can find out what is cos theta that is the angle with which the angular momentum is processing about the magnetic field so cos theta cos theta is adjacent side by hypotenuse the adjacent side is given by the projection ml h cross and the hypotenuse is square root of l into l plus 1 h cross so h cross h cross cancels you find that cos theta is equal to ml by square root of l into l plus 1 right now ml has to be an integer and cos theta can never be more than unity okay so ml can have values from minus l to plus l that is 2l plus 1 values only means ml can have values from minus l to plus l including 0 totally it can have 2l plus 1 values let us take an example let l equal to 0 so ml equal to 0 there is only one orientation possible and it is shown here if our orbital angular momentum is zero then ml becoming zero okay now the electron will be processing about the magnetic field like this when l equal to 1 ml can have minus 1 0 and plus 1 there are three orientations possible just see here when m when l equal to 1 ml can have plus 1 value zero value zero value minus 1 value you see if ml equal to 1 then the orbital angular momentum presses about this external magnetic field like this if ml equal to minus 1 then the orbital angular momentum will be processing along this direction thus you find that only three orientations are possible for the electron orbit see this is the orbital angular momentum you can see the electron orbit will be like this in the presence of the magnetic field orbital angular momentum is processing here right like this only three orientations suppose l equal to 2 i hope you could guess how many values 2 into 2 plus 1 five values let us look at the diagram you see here when l equal to 2 you can have ml equal to plus 2 plus 1 0 minus 1 minus 2 so you can see that the orbital angular momentum can process about the magnetic field only in five orientation 1 2 3 4 5 five orientations so this is what called magnetic orbital angular momentum quantum number ml so it is represented like this next 
the same way we have to define magnetic spin angular momentum quantum number and it is represented as ms similar to l the spin angular momentum s precesses in the presence of the magnetic field okay like this if spin is clockwise direction spin angular momentum will be precessing about b like this if spin is anti clockwise direction then it will be spinning see just opposite so the due to spin motion the angular momentum arising will have only two orientation and that is given here like this the projection of s along the z direction is given as s is equal to ms h cross and it is quantized there are only certain orientations theta okay so ms is known as magnetic spin quantum number the permitted values of ms are from minus s to plus s that means plus half to minus half okay quantum mechanically s can be written as square root of s into s plus 1 h cross and the projection is given by this factor so both this is magnitude and this is the direction it should be quantized now what is cos theta you find that adjacent side by hypotenuse so substitute these values you will be able to find out what is cos theta so either theta can be in this direction or it could be in this direction right next quantum number is magnetic total angular momentum quantum number already we have studied what is total angular momentum quantum number that was represented by the letter j here another quantum number in the presence of magnetic field that is called magnetic total angular momentum quantum number mj now yes it is due to the combination of orbital and spin angular momentum processing about the external magnetic field b right so look at this diagram your l is here what is l orbital angular momentum and this is spin angular momentum vector now these two are here the vector sum of l and s gives you what is j vector the vector sum of orbital angular momentum and spin angular momentum will give you what is total angular momentum it could be j equal to l plus or minus s so this total angular momentum vector is represented like this now when you apply a magnetic field you find that this total angular momentum vector precesses about this external magnetic field okay as a result you can see the projection of this total angular momentum along the z direction is given by this expression mj h cross okay and it is decided by the values of j and mj next one quantum mechanically j can be written as root of j into j plus 1 h cross and the projection value is this much so we can find out what is cos theta okay theta is angle between j and the applied magnetic field along the z direction okay the permitted orientations of j are to j plus 1 values from plus j to minus j excluding zero so when you come to the number of orientations j can have only 2j plus 1 values minus j to plus j excluding zero let us see now when j equal to plus half mj can have two values only plus half and minus half okay this diagram already you are familiar with so you can see the magnetic total angular momentum quantum number mj when it takes value plus half then only two orientations are possible plus half or minus half okay 
Right. When j equal to 3 by 2, then mj, how many values you can see? j equal to 3 by 2. In this formula, 3 by 2. 2 to cancels 3 plus 1, there could be 4 values. What are those values? You can see mj can have plus 3 by 2, plus 1 by 2, minus 1 by 2, minus 3 by 2. And there is no, no zero value here. That is, it should exclude because electron will always spin clockwise or anticlockwise. It can never stop its spin motion. Right? Like our earth, how it is spinning about itself and coming around the sun, electron is also spinning about itself. So, spin motion can never be zero. That is why we exclude zero here. Right. This shows that the frustrational motion of an electron in magnetic field contributes energy to the electron. And each electron level splits into 2j plus 1 sublevels. This, what are the advantages of tractor model? Whatever you referred as the failure of Bose or Sommer failed atom model, all are well explained with the help of this vector atom model. You recall the failures, the Bohr atom model, Sommer failed atom model could not explain the distribution of electrons. Whereas you can see vector atom model explains the distribution of electrons in various shells and its electronic configuration and you, the spectral distribution and the intensity of spectral lines, fine structure of spectral lines. When magnetic field is applied, why the level is further splitting, all that is well explained here. And it is verified, vector atom model concepts are verified by Stern and Gerlach experiment. Okay. Also, the Zeeman effect and the Stark effect could be explained by vector atom model. And moreover, the nuclear shell model also based on this vector atom model. So, entire modern physics concepts are successful because of this vector atom model. This vector atom model is a successful one. I hope you have understood the various quantum numbers associated with this vector atom model. Thank you.